Imagine how painful it would be to have an operation without anesthetic. Anetcha was a black woman in the US in the 19th century. She underwent her first surgery at the age of 17. Over a period of four years she underwent a total of 30 operations, all without anesthetic. The man who operated on her was J. Marion Sims, a prominent figure in medical science in the US, known as the father of modern gynecology. He contributed revolutionary tools and techniques to the field of medicine, but his achievements were made on brutal human experimentations. Black people don't feel pain, therefore why waste the anesthesia? With this notion in mind, Dr. Sims operated on black women without any anesthetic. But white women were anesthetized. So how low was the status of blacks in the US? How miserable were the lives of black slaves? After Columbus discovered the fertile land of the Americas in the late 15th century, many Europeans traveled to the Americas to buy lands and grow sugar cane. However, due to the sparse population of the Americas and the mass slaughter of the indigenous Indians, there was a severe shortage of labor. As a result, the European colonists engaged in an organized mass trafficking of black people on the then still backward continent of Africa. In addition to subjugating blacks with weapons, European traders would deliberately provoke conflicts between African tribes to induce war, and then buy prisoners from both sides of the war. This is how they had a constant supply of captives, and ship after ship of black people were transported from the African continent. During the transport, the hands and feet of black slaves were tied and they were thrown into the dark, narrow holds of the ships, and both men and women were stripped naked. Why were the blacks not clothed? The white people saw the slaves as commodities, which had no dignity, so naturally, they did not need to be clothed. It was also easier to sterilize the black slaves and reduce wear and tear during transport. Those who fell ill or contracted a disease were thrown straight into the sea. For those who did make it to the Americas, the nightmare had just begun. To select healthy slaves, plantation owners would often break open the mouths of the slaves so that they could see the condition of their teeth and get an idea of a slave's age. When examining the quality of their slaves, some slave owners would stick out their tongues and lick the sweat on the chin or face of their slaves to determine if they were sick. Slave owners could force their black slaves to do whatever they wanted them to do. Owners would beat the saps at will and cut off their hands and feet if they failed to complete their work. After a whipping, they would rub red pepper water, salt water or pine oil on the wound to make it memorable. Blacks worked endlessly every day on the plantations established by the capitalists, and they barely had any break. What time would they pick y'all up? Three o'clock in the morning. Three o'clock in the morning? Yeah! Oh no. And then what time y'all be finished? Oh, about five at the clock come up, we leave all the day. To about five in the afternoon? Yeah. From three o'clock in the morning? Yeah! And was you doing it for free, or how much they was paying? Nothing. Apart from male slaves, there were also black female slaves. They were not as strong as the male slaves, but were forced to do the same hard, heavy work, and some of the good-looking women were often violated by the slave masters. These young black slaves were kept in captivity by the slave masters as they grew up and became the new workforce, and from the age of 13 these African girls were constantly forced to give birth to children. It's important for us to remember that enslaved people lived their lives in families because it reminds us of the ways that they were opposing their commodification. Historians and scholars use the term fictive kin, the creation of, of family ties in order to replace the family ties that have been so brutally wrenched. Some particularly cruel and greedy white slave owners would exploit a black slave for decades, until the black slave was no longer able to work. They would not spend a penny on an old black man who could no longer work, they would simply abandon him to the wild or leave him to fend for himself. The greediest slave owners would even sell their slaves at an old age for a small profit. If there is anything that makes black slavery a purgatory in my mind, anything that fills me with hatred for slave owners, it is my grandmother's poor ordeal. She devoted her life faithfully to my old master, she served him like a true grandmother, she rocked his cradle, took care of him as he grew up, she was the source of all his wealth. She gave birth to black slaves who filled the plantations. What did that bring her? She is now just another slave in the hands of others, watching herself and her children and grandchildren being sold like cattle, and she could do nothing about it. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Matilda, the last known survivor of the last U.S. slave ship, died in 1940 on the 75th anniversary of the abolition of slavery in the United States. 
she was forced to become a mother at the age of 14 and she waited an apology from the US government that never came. <laughs>